all Tennessee had to do was win the SEC championship against LSU, and they were going to play Miami for the national championship. In his second season, Nick Saban. Tennessee was the number two ranked team in the country. Here's the pass deep for Washington. Touchdown, Tennessee. I never thought we were going to have much of a chance. LSU was kind of a mess in the first half. Going deep, got him in stride. Tennessee came back twice and got the ball and just scored fast. Firing it down short, and it is caught. This game's over. Tennessee's just too good. Did not get it. Not even close. It was all going their way. Rohan Davey is taking a pounding. LSU had lost its starting quarterback to an injury. Matt Mock playing in place of an injured Rohan Davey. It was a spark that Tennessee could not stop. Quarterback draw Mock running more like a running back than he does a quarterback. This was going to be fought right to the end. Goes deep there. Stoller Davis for an LSU touchdown. Oh, man, this is something. Hi, everybody, and welcome to SEC Rewind. I'm Joe Tessitore. Tennessee and LSU headlined the 2001 SEC Championship. The Vols came to Atlanta at 10-1. and They were ranked number two in the nation. They needed a win to clinch a spot in the Rose Bowl in a date with undefeated Miami. Tennessee had won the first ever BCS National Championship back in 98, and they were hungry for another. Meanwhile, number 21 LSU, under second-year head coach Nick Saban, they were 8-3. and three. The Tigers were making their first appearance in the SEC Championship game. They already dropped a game to Tennessee earlier in that season. It was a 26-16 loss at Neyland Stadium back in September. Let's go to the Georgia Dome for the SEC Championship matchup. Vern Lundquist and Todd Blackledge with the call. Welcome back to Atlanta, the SEC Championship game presented by Dr. Pepper, Tennessee has won seven in a row. LSU has won its last four. LSU won the toss, which means Alex Walls will kick off for the Tennessee Volunteers. Dominic Davis is the deepest of two. He is joined deep for LSU by Devery Henderson. There's Henderson, number 26, and Davis, number 31. Underway. Short kick taken by Dominic Davis at the 10, center of the field. And good downfield coverage by the Volunteers of Tennessee. LSU takes over at its own 23 yard line. And let's check in with the third member of our commentary team. Here's Jill Aaron. Thanks, Vern. Where for those of you who are superstitious, two hasn't been the luckiest number so far this season. The second ranked teams as the seasons have gone on haven't fared well. Florida, Nebraska, Oklahoma, and Florida again. But tonight, it's second ranked Tennessee's opportunity to seize the moment and get to that national championship game. Vern. All right, Jill. They will be on defense, and Rohan Davy, the senior quarterback. Play fake. Davy wants to go deep. Comes out, gets a good block, and fires it incomplete for Jarrell Myers, number three. There was a turnback block that gave Davey time to release the ball. Rohan Davey for the season, 18 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. This is only his 16th start. Full season as a starter, a backup the previous two years. Yeah, great leader, great competitor, but also a guy who, when he gets hot, he really plays well. And Jimbo Fisher, the offensive coordinator, likes to get him off to a quick start. Second down and 10, and Joe DiMaggio, the backup tight end, is in the backfield. LeBrandon Tofield gets the handoff and heads left. Caught and dropped at the 25-yard line by John Henderson. And let's check the Dr. Pepper starting lineups now. First of all, offensively, up front, Ben Wilkerson, the true freshman, has kind of anchored this. Dwayne Pierce at right guard is the outstanding one. It's Tofield, Lee in the backfield, Myers, Josh Reed, the All-American, and Robert Royal is the tight end. And on the sidelines, 50 years of age in his second season, Nick Saban. And you might be kind of surprised. He's a defensive guy. 
and yet he elected to receive the opening kickoff because he feels his offense is what sets the tempo for his whole football team. LSU has scored on its first possession each of the last four games. And here they're trying to convert on third down, and Davey, who can run, shows you how. He picks up the first down and keeps the drive alive. Nice decision by Rohan Davey. Doesn't see what he likes downfield, and then he sees a lane. And as you mentioned, he's athletic enough to do this. He's got to protect that ball. He sometimes gets a little carried away with the football hanging out loose, but that time, good decision, and gets a big first down for the Tigers. Earlier this season in a turnaround game, he threw for 528 against Atlanta, Alabama. Now he converts on third down. Davey back, a little crossing pattern underneath. It is dropped by Corey Webster. That's going to bring up a second down and 10. We'll catch our breath for a moment and set the defense now for Tennessee under John Chavis. A brilliant game last week. It's Jackson, Henderson, Hainsworth, and Overstreet. The linebackers, Eddie Moore, Stevenson, Key on Whiteside for an injured Kevin Burnett. And the secondary, Gaines, Baker, Julian Battle, and Jabari Greer. Philip Fulmer, 10th full season head coach, Tennessee, second and 10. Out of the gun, two wide receivers split wide right. And a double tight end set, flags. Steve Shaw is our referee tonight. Dead ball, false start on the offense. Five yard penalty, second down. And one thing I think that's going to be very important for LSU tonight, in, a, in addition to playing physically and blocking this Tennessee front, they've got to be productive on first down. Where Tennessee's defense is really good is if they get you behind the down and distance and can pin their ears back and come after your quarterback. And you don't want to have many of these kind of situations second and 15. Standard defensive set. Tofield gets the handoff and heads to his left. Motors out near the 40-yard line. The tackle made by Eddie Moore, number 37. Strong side linebacker for Tennessee. LeBrandon Tofield, one of the key figures. Yeah for this ball club. Well, he changes their personality. I mean, when he's healthy and when he's playing at the top of his game, he gives them a toughness and an ability to get extra yards that they don't have with anybody else. They've got some other good runners, but you see, when he was banged up in the middle of the season, his production went down and the team, LSU, did not play nearly as well. Third and six from the 40. And Tennessee will bring four. Pressure for Davey. Almost picked off. John Henderson with the pressure. And if Andre Lott doesn't tip this ball, it's intercepted by Julian Battle. Here's Henderson right in the middle. Last year's Outland Trophy winner just runs right between two blockers. Peterman in the center, Wilkerson. <laughs> it's good to have two guys assigned to him, but they better not whiff. And they did that time. The initial hit was a clean hit. I think Rohan got a knee in the back at the end of the play. Not that hit there, but watch at the end of the play, a knee on top of it. He was just going to get in your grill a little bit on that. Taking a trip in the next 12 months? Airlines are under tremendous pressure, and they're practically giving away their unsold seats. Like every crisis, this one will end too. But right now is the best time to take advantage of giveaway ticket prices on their unsold seats. We're not allowed to publish these low fares online. The only way to get these rock bottom giveaway prices is to call. So phone low cost airlines now for airline ticket prices you may never see again. Oh my gosh. Wow. Who am I? Wow. Is that really me? <laughs> Hi, I'm Jonathan Greenhut, the CEO of Plexiderm. All it takes is 10 minutes to reduce the appearance of under eye bags, wrinkles, and crow's feet. The instant results are from naturally based silicates found in shell clay. Once applied, your skin tightens and firms. Take action with our Plexiderm 10 minute challenge. Try it today for only $14.95 plus get free shipping. Visit PlexidermTrial.com or call the number on your screen. You've heard that an apple a day keeps the doctor away, but you still need to see your dentist because getting good dental care is important to your overall health. You know dental bills can take a big bite out of your budget, especially if you're retired or on Medicare. Even a simple cleaning can cost $200. 
and other procedures like crowns and root canals can cost hundreds, even thousands more. But affordable dental insurance from Physicians Mutual Insurance Company can help. Give us a call or go online for this free information kit with all the details. This isn't just a discount plan or for checkups only. This is real dental insurance that can help pay for over 350 covered procedures, like cleanings, fillings, crowns, even dentures. There are no deductibles, no annual maximum, and you can see any dentist you like. So don't wait. Call or go to sendinfokit.com to get your free information kit. Call now. At Sports Center, our goal is to embrace the latest technology. Whatever enhances the viewing experience. Virtual reality, 3D, we want to do that. Welcome into Sports Center. I'm Tony Collins. We got a little bit of everything for you today. In the NBA, our insider Adrian Wojnarowski with the very latest happening around the association. Also in baseball, what you need to know on the diamond. We got Buster only Tim Kirchin. And in the NFL, camps are starting. Big night of sports. We got baseball. We got college football. It's still early. Uh, we're in the beta stage. Other than a national championship, there is no game that carries more weight, pressure. When you walk through that tunnel, the SEC championship game, you know, the place is rocking, it's 50-50, half one the other. And for some reason, this game above all others just carry, you feel the weight of the world on you when you come through that tunnel. We've got a full house plus for the 10th SEC championship game. To appreciate this game, you have to put it into its historical context. Uh, the game was played a week later than normal because of 9-11. The Florida-Tennessee game, which normally uh, lands on the third Saturday, second or third Saturday in September, was obviously was not played because of 9-11 and was moved all the way to the end of the season on December 2nd. The week after Thanksgiving, you essentially had two playoff games. Uh, you had Auburn at LSU. We had Tennessee at Florida. The winners of both games went to this game. The Volunteers reached the SEC championship game by virtue of a two-point upset at Florida last Saturday. Florida was ranked number two. Everybody assumed that Tennessee coming in was going to lose, that Florida was going to win the game and get in the hunt for the national championship. Tennessee pulled a monumental upset. We all knew when we left Gainesville that day that all Tennessee had to do was win the SEC championship against LSU and they were going to go to the Rose Bowl and play Miami for the national championship. Leader of the LSU defense, Trev Falk, going over some plans on the sideline. First down, 10 LSU now. What might we expect here, Todd? Well, this will be a good chance to try to throw deep. I mean, Rohan Davey loves to throw the post pattern, and they haven't got the, the ball to Josh Reed yet. Josh Reed is right up there at the top of the screen. 90, 90 catches for the season. Davey looks for Josh Reed. Dances right, gets a little pressure, tucks it and runs it, and he is hit as he goes out of bounds. There is no flag. No. That was right on the edge. No flag, but a coach or a manager or somebody down on the Tennessee sideline and Davies down. It's Rohan Davey. Rohan Davey. Right foot's out, left foot's out. They could have very easily called that. I think Rohan got a knee in the back at the end of the play. Not that hit there, but watch at the end of the play, a knee on top of him. Well, his family looks on with a degree of concern now. Rohan Davey, 35 tickets he needed. His mom in the middle wearing number six. And uh, an attitude of prayer now for her son. Well, here's the play again. He's out of bounds, and he's hit. They could have called it a penalty, and then he's hit again. Probably the only controversial play in the game was the, the first play when the LSU quarterback, Rohan Davey, got, got hurt. He got injured. Um, and it was a play into the boundary, and the question was, was it a late hit? Tucks it and runs it, and he is hit as he goes out of bounds. There is no play. No. That was right on the edge. But going back, looking at the film at the time to evaluate it, um, his right foot was down, 
Uh, then there was contact, then the left foot hit out of bounds. So the initial hit was, was a clean hit, even though you know some people from LSU may have disagreed with it. Right foot's out, left foot's out. They could have very easily called that. Coach and a, a lot of the uh, fans wanted a late hit on it. He was just going to get in your grill a little bit on that. Well, here's the play again. He's out of bounds and he's hit. They could have called it a penalty and then he's hit again. And all of us thought that Tennessee was going to win the game. And when Rohan Davey, the quarterback, got hurt, we really thought they were going to win the game. Rohan Davey was injured in the Florida loss after these two teams played in September 29th. And uh, Tennessee prevailed in that game. Davey threw for 188 yards in the fourth quarter. Just a brilliant comeback attempt. And then went back home, a dispirited LSU team. This is Keon Whiteside who laid the hit on Davey. And uh, he was injured in, a, in a, a debacle early on in the loss at home to Florida. Well, if anyone can come back from an injury, it would be Rohan Davey. He is a real competitor and a very, very tough football player and there would have to be something very serious to keep him out of this football game See, I don't think it's anything in his lower body I think he got a knee in the ribs or in the back not on this hit now that could have been a penalty but watch Rashad Moore at the end of the play a knee right in the back and I think that's what hurt Rohan Davies Matt Mock, who came on and played for Davey in the Florida loss, is on in that game. He was 11 of 22. He is a 22-year-old uh, young man who played minor league baseball for four years, was originally recruited out of Jasper, Indiana, by Nick Saban at Michigan State. And the first thing he has to do is make sure he gets a good snap from the center. Has that. Here's Tofield heading left. Gang tackled at the 35-yard line. The stop made by Dominic Stevenson, number 28. And Rohan Davey is heading for the locker room. I guess the best news, Todd, is that he is the limping. He's walking yeah. without assistance. Yeah, it's something in his back or his kidney. Now, you can see he's got rib pads on. So, hopefully, he had a little protection there. And, and like I said, if there's anyone that can come back, I mean, this guy is an extremely tough football player. And he'd be the guy that could do it. Matt Mock played in the Cubs organization. And uh, Josh Booty, of course, a predecessor quarterback for LSU. Likewise, a minor league baseball player. Seems to be a trend these days. And we just did get a message from next door. The LSU folks told us it is ribs that, that they're going in to look at on Rohan Davey. Third down, Matt Mock in the gun. He's a good runner, too. Quarterback draw. And he's hit, slips the tackle, works to the 30. I think he might have a first down. Might have slipped that ball or stretched the ball out far enough. We saw this against Florida when he came in the ball game. He's a very good athlete, a very good runner. This is a design quarterback draw, and this is just all Mock. He does it all on his own. Some missed tackles and a good effort by Mock. 22-year-old freshman converts on third down. And that uh, LSU, by the way, 52% conversions yeah. on third down. It's an extraordinary stat. Now, what you don't know, of course, is third and one <laughs> or third and ten. Uh, it's a good number no matter what it yeah. is. First down and ten. Scoreless first quarter. Here's Mock. Tofield knocked down behind the line. Contact made by Eddie Moore, number 37. Three wide receiver set now. Jarrell Myers is wide right. Little confusion with the offensive line right now. Again, a new quarterback calling the protections up front. Snap from Wilkerson. Mock with time. Goes deep. Tipped. Incomplete. Eddie Moore, number 37. Yeah, Eddie Moore did a nice job on the play before on the running play. Came on a run blitz. This time he dropped in coverage and got his hands on the football. But again, pressure. We saw this last week. Excellent pressure on Rex Grossman last week and Bernard Jackson there. On the defense, five-yard penalty, repeat second down. And uh, Steve Shaw letting us know there was an infraction. And you can believe that Tennessee and their defense right now thinking we're going to really come after Matt Mock. I mean, maybe we were still going to come after Rohan Davey. There's John Chavis, the defensive coordinator. And, and right now with a new quarterback, 
And a guy who hasn't played much, you better believe they're going to come after Matt Mock. Second down five from the 25. Here's Mock on the half roll. Fires it deep right side for Reed. Double coverage at the goal line. Flag is thrown. Took a little while to get the hanky out of the pocket. Your quarterback is hurt. You need to get some confidence. What do you do? You try to get the ball to the Bolitnikoff winner, your best offensive weapon. Now, this is good coverage by Lott. They did get tangled up, and over the top, Rashad Baker made contact. But look at what Josh Reed has done this season. Just staggering, 90 receptions. Look at the average yards per game. Just a, an incredible season and a well-deserved Bolitnikoff award. Josh Reed in excess of 100 yards in 10 of the 11 games this season. The only game in which he did not go over 100 was a loss to Ole Miss, which was the low point of the season. He had yep. three catches for 85 yards in that game. That, uh, not so coincidentally, was Rohan Davies' worst game of the year as well. First and 10 after the penalty, just outside the 10. Here's Tofield. He's got 19 touchdowns this season, and 14 of the 19 have come from inside the 10-yard line. He is just excellent yes. once they get in the uh, red zone area. And this is strength versus strength. I mean, he's great running in the red zone, and Tennessee is great at defending the run in the red zone. They have only given up five touchdown runs all season. Look at that, 22 in the last 45 games. So this is a very difficult defense to run against when you get into the red zone. Report from Jill Arrington on the sideline. Rohan Davey in the locker room getting x-rayed right now. And his team, a second down and eight from the nine. Out of the shotgun. Mock across the middle, tipped again. Remember in the first quarter at Florida last week when John Henderson had two knockdowns, they get their hands up, these guys. Yeah, this was Rashad Moore. Now, I think he just kind of dropped off the line. He was kind of playing a little bit of zone defense. He dropped off and then jumped up, but he had his eyes on the quarterback the entire time. And the updated report from the locker room, chest contusions for Rohan Davey. Third and eight from the nine, a scoreless first quarter, midway through. Matt Mock needs to be smart here with the football because they can't afford to come away with this with no points. Looks for Clayton, comes right, flag is down, and Josh Reed couldn't hang on to it. There's an infraction, the penalty flag at the 10-yard line. Couple penalties against Tennessee have already prolonged this drive. Offsides on the defense, half the distance to the goal, repeat third down. And I think they're lining up offsides. They're not jumping, but they're lining off with their head across the neutral zone, and that's twice now in this drive. Tennessee has been called for offsides. They also had the big pass interference penalty against Josh Reed. And you think back now to the early going, that's the third mental mistake we've seen made by Tennessee. Third down from the five. Watch a quarterback draw here. There it is, Mock comes right. Touchdown, Louisiana State. As they did in the first encounter between these two on September 29th, LSU scores first, but in such a different fashion. They spread them out by formation. They opened up the middle, and Matt Mock, a very good runner, finds his way. Good blocking at the point of the attack, and LSU on the board first. The 22-year-old gets the touchdown, and John Corbello is on for the extra point. Up and good. Well, that was a Tennessee team that had everything in front of it. Here's the pass deep for Washington. Wow. Touchdown, Tennessee. 31 yards. Tennessee's on the board. Looks like they picked the wrong getaway driver. They're going to be paying for this for a long time. They will, but with accident forgiveness. Allstate won't raise your rates just because of an accident, even if it's your fault. Cut! Sonny. So good? Line! The desert never lies. Isn't that what I said? Uh, no, you were talking about Allstate and 
insurance. I just want to. Let's try again. I'm ready back to one. Accident forgiveness from Allstate. Click or call for a quote today. I'm Doug Hirsch. You may already know that GoodRx can help you save up to 80% on your prescriptions. Unfortunately, many Americans can't get to a doctor right now. The good news is that for many health issues, you can see a doctor online. It's easy. Just go to GoodRx.com, and with a few clicks, you'll be treated by a licensed medical professional, all from the comfort of your own home. Visits are confidential and affordable. Need a prescription? Your doctor can send it to your pharmacy or have it mailed to you. Get the health care you deserve at GoodRx.com. Built to connect us, even if we're apart. Built to uplift us, no matter where you're watching. Built by your cheers, but still inspire. Built to overcome, because that's what champions do. Even though you can't be at the open, you are still a part of it. Tune in and download our app to experience more. The U.S. Open, built for fans everywhere. Are you over 50? Would you like to get up to 33% more income in retirement? Then call now for this free book, Annuity Do's and Don'ts for Baby Boomers, from a leading financial firm on maximizing your income in retirement. That's right, free. This free book reveals little-known secrets about annuity strategies in simple-to-understand terms that will help you make the right choices before buying an annuity. And it's free! Call right now for your free book, and as a bonus, we'll also throw in a free annuity rate report. We researched over 1,200 annuities and summarized the rates and benefits of annuities from financially strong insurers. Again, that's annuity do's and don'ts for baby boomers and a free annuity rate report, both absolutely free, for calling Annuity General today. Supplies are limited. Call now. Call 800-619-6261. That's 800-619-6261. It was a good LSU team, not a great LSU team in the 2001 SEC Championship. Rohan Davy was a great athlete. I don't think he was a great quarterback, but he was a great athlete. Tofield was a, was a special kind of talent. They had some good defensive players. But this was Nick Saban's second year at LSU. Back then there was a lot of doubters. And he was listening to the post-game show. People were just melting the radio. And his daughter asked him, are we going to have to move again? Because he'd just been there like a year and a half. You know, LSU had had these m many bad seasons in the late 80s, throughout the 90s. Now remember the year before, they lost to UAB. Now they weren't that good. Now they came back the second year, and, and you could see that he was building but they weren't quite ready to be a championship caliber team. He picks up the first down and keeps the drive alive. They were kind of playing in fits and starts. You know, they were mid-season, they were 5-3, and three. they lost to Ole Miss, kind of a disappointing game. They beat Auburn in the last game of the year, a game that was moved because of 9-11, and so uh, they won that game to go to the SEC championship game for, for the first time. They weren't expected to be that good in 2001. So none of us expected them to win. First down and 10, Tennessee trailing by seven. And off. Stevens skips out of one tackle and is dropped at the 79 uh, yard line. The tackle made by Trev Clark. Well, we've got a large contingent of folks who travel each week to bring you college football, the SEC on CBS. One of our colleagues uh, in the hospital tonight, taken ill yesterday and underwent surgery this morning in Atlanta Hospital. We want to wish the best to Terry Hester, one of our ace camera guys. Better known affectionately by all of us as Twister. Terry, get well, rejoin us. Second down and seven. Darting run by Stevens out to the 35 yard line. Third down. Third and two. Stevens got the first down out at the 39-yard line. The tackle made by Brady James. Oh, remember last week when Mom was uh, riding on the strut of a blimp? Well, look at here. <laughs> Guess what? It's almost time for the Aflac trivia question of the night. Here it is. Who was LSU's head coach the last time they won an outright SEC title? 
Yeah, the year was 1986, and we'll tell you shortly. First down and 10, 7 0. Tennessee's going to go deep here pretty soon. Stevens across the 40 for a couple. Tackle made at the 41 yard line. Trev Falk and Brady James, two of the three linebackers. Well, LSU is doing a nice job on Travis Stevens right now. Remember last week, a career high 226 yards on only 19 carries. So far tonight, seven carries and only 17 yards. So LSU doing a very nice job defending the run right now. Travis Stevens has had uh, an outstanding senior year, a finalist for the Doak Walker Award. He did not win it. It went to Luke Staley of Brigham Young. Travis was down in Orlando for the award presentation. Here's Witten, the big tight end, Jason Witten to the 33-yard line. LSU is trying to play a cover two defense with two deep safeties to help on the outside wide receivers. A perfect read by Casey Clawson. See, the safeties are going to split. Witten, the tight end, is going to work right in the middle. When a quarterback sees the safety split, you think middle of the field, and that's exactly where Clawson found Witten. Jason Witten had a tough outing last week against Florida. He shook it off. He couldn't wait to get back on the field this week, and he makes a nice big catch there. One of the more poignant scenes from last week's game in Gainesville. He came off after a fumble. Philip Fulmer gave him a hug and said, we're going to need you. Here's the pass deep for Washington. Wow. Touchdown, Tennessee. Kelly Washington, 31 yards. Tennessee's on the board. You could just tell that Tennessee was going to try to go deep. They went to Witten, and now they go to Washington. Hookfin, the best cover corner. He sees the ball, but he just can't make the play. A perfect throw by Casey Clawson. Out and over the outside shoulder. Trev Falk with a hit after the play, but a perfect throw by Casey Clawson. Alex Walls for the extra point. I never thought to be honest with you, that we were going to have much of a chance. Lawson rolling out, firing it down short, and it is caught. Everybody has sunglasses, but most sunglasses just make everything darker and are useless when it comes to blinding glare. Not these. Nick Bolton here with the latest from Bell & Howell. We call them tack glasses. Inspired by the sunglasses worn by our heroes in uniform, TAC glasses can do things no ordinary sunglasses can do, like block blinding glare so well, invisible objects suddenly become visible. Look, ordinary sunglasses just make things darker, which could be deadly in a tactical situation. TAC glasses improve optical clarity so you can see clearly, even in low light. If you've never seen how this light filtering technology works, check this out. Nothing to see, right? But look again as we hold up our TAC glasses. A colorful American Eagle is revealed. Amazing. Take a look at the screen. Yes. What do you see? I see a plain white screen. It's just a plain white screen. Now look up through our sunglasses. Whoa, this is cool. How does it do that? That is so awesome. What? Oh my. Whoa, what? That is so cool. That is amazing. How does it do that? It's like an eagle pops out of nowhere. Very, very cool. Whether you're on the trail or on the golf course, on the water or on the slopes, with tack glasses, you'll always see clearly without any glare. There's just nothing like it on the market today. Act now to get your tack glasses for just $19.99 with free shipping. We'll also include a blank card that reveals our American Eagle when you put on your tack glasses. Order today and you can also get our night vision tack glasses. Just pay a separate fee. They help protect your natural night vision to improve optical clarity and low light. You can get both. So don't delay. Here's how to order. To order, call 1-800-309-2499 or go to trytacglasses.com. Again, that's 1-800-309-2499 or order online at tritacglasses.com. That's 1-800-309-2499.
first down and ten. Here's Clawson coming right. Diving wow. catch is made catch. by Kelly Washington. Now the thing you have to remember about Kelly Washington, he's still new playing wide receiver. You mentioned he's a 22-year-old freshman, but he's six foot four, 225 pounds, and can really run. And that is just that's outstanding work on the sideline by a guy who's still kind of learning how to play this position. And they will bring the chain across as you uh, see the graphic. Nice job by Tennessee on first down. I really think winning first down is, is key in this ball game because if you can stay ahead of the down and distance and stay ahead of the chains, it takes a little of that aggressiveness away from both of these defenses, particularly Tennessee. And right now, Tennessee is doing a much better job of being productive on first down than LSU is. And uh, let's get an update from Jill Arrington on LeBrandon Tofield. Well, Vern, he has a sprained left knee. At this point, they don't know how bad it is. They're icing it down right now. They're going to check on it more. For now, he's questionable. Well, that was a factor when they played in September. He only had eight carries for 20 yards. Up in Knoxville, he was pretty much a non-factor, and he uh, is a big difference maker for this team. Second and a foot. Will Bartholomew with a block that sends Travis Stevens to the 50-yard line. Good block by the fullback, the senior Will Bartholomew. Tennessee loves to run ISO football and power football. Watch the fullback, Bartholomew, get the lead block. you got to have a fullback who can lead on the linebacker. He got Brady James down, and Kelly Washington got a nice block on the free safety, Ryan Clark. Tennessee runs that play as much, if not more, than anybody in college football. Longest run of the night for Travis Stevens. It measured at nine, first down from midfield. There's Bartholomew looking back. And Casey Clawson setting up, going deep for Kelly Washington. Got him in stride. Down at the three. It was a checkoff. It was a checkoff at the line of scrimmage by Casey Clawson. He saw what he wanted again. That was a lot of bodies in there to stop the run. Single coverage outside with Washington on Damian James, and he audible to it. Watch, here's the single right here. The strong safety's over here to help on Stallworth. Single coverage, and Washington right from the beginning runs by Damian James, and another nice throw by Casey Clawson. He saw it, he checked to it, and then he made it pay off with the good throw. Boy, this has got to be like a nightmare, deja vu, for Nick Saban and the LSU Tigers. Double tight end set with Bartholomew in there. Here's play fake. Clawson rolling out, firing it down short, and it is caught. Troy Fleming, number 27, with the touchdown catch. He made the nice catch last week against Florida, and this was a difficult catch because this was not an excellent throw by Clawson. It was low and away, and Fleming did a nice job of going down and getting the football. Watch Fleming come out of the backfield now, right out into the flat. And the throw is going to be low by Casey Clawson, and Fleming goes down and makes it. Alex Walls with the extra point. Troy Fleming, yes indeed. Well, what was at stake for Tennessee was an opportunity to go to the Rose Bowl to play for the national championship. Here's the pass deep for Washington. Tennessee. Well, that was a Tennessee team that had everything in front of it. I mean, they had gone through an unprecedented stretch of 93, 94, 95, 90. And they, were in, they were perennially in the top five. Philip Fulmer, 10th full season head coach, Tennessee. Here you have Phil Fulmer coming off of a national championship three years earlier, knocking on the door of another one. Clawson rolling out, firing it down short, and it is caught. Troy Fleming, number 27, with the touchdown catch. You turn right around in 2001, you got another great team, you got a great roster, you're solid at quarterback, and you're going to ride this wave of, of success over a period where people are starting to use the D word, dynasty. They had a really good team, great defense, uh, great wideouts, you know, really good quarterback. Um, and I never thought, to be honest with you, that. Um, we were going to have much of a chance, you know, in that game. 
They did this to them up in Knoxville, and they're getting it done again today. They'd beaten LSU during the regular season in Knoxville. LSU was clearly the underdog. They were just probably supposed to be happy to be there. Second and eight. It's Dominic Davis in the backfield now. He gets the handoff, gets a lead block, and manages to work his way out to the 23-yard line. And I know all of you have been waiting now for the answer to the Aflac. See, these guys, these, these guys understand that it's close to Christmas. And the answer is LSU's head coach in 1986, Bill Arnspark. Now, you're going to tell me you knew that. No, I didn't know that. And that, by the way, was the last year that LSU played on a January 1st Bowl. They will this year for the first time in 15 yard years, regardless, win or lose tonight. Third and short, the toss. Davis coming left, caught and dropped. Jabari Greer led the charge, number 33. I just talked about the speed of the Tennessee defense. Kind of an unusual call for LSU. Third and less than one. Why not run a quarterback sneak with Davey? You take it off the line of scrimmage and then run to the side, and Tennessee's defense shows their speed. Jabari Greer with the play on the sideline. Maybe you don't run the quarterback sneak there because you've got a Rohan Davey with a little bit of a, an injury in chest, his upper body. Uh, that's chest right. contusion, that's right. And you didn't have LeBrandon Topio. That's exactly right. And the best third down team in the SEC is stopped for no gain on third and less than one. Now, Mike, I can't imagine Nick Saban going for it, but it looks to me like, no, yes, no, he is. He, he, what he may do here, though, is he may just try to draw offsides and have Rohan Davey go with a hard snap count. And if they can't get the penalty, then punt the football because a mistake here could be very, very critical for LSU. Here's a pair of dice. Let's roll them. No running backs in the formation. Went for it, bobbled the snap. I don't Did know that he it. got it. Did not get it, not even close. Fourth and a foot from your own 23 in the SEC championship game. An injured quarterback, Rohan Davey, LeBrandon Tofield not there. Well, he didn't get it because he didn't get the snap, first of all. It was a bad exchange between the center, Ben Wilkerson, who's a freshman. Watch the snap. Rohan Davey never gets it, and by the time he picks it off the ground, he has no momentum, and he is thrown backwards. You know, when a center's got a guy right over his nose like that in a short yardage situation, sometimes he doesn't take care of business first. Nick yeah. wanted a face mask, but that play was stuffed. Now you can label that one second guesser's delight. Here's Clawson. Throws it at the feet of Will Offenhusel, his uh, offensive tackle. And this is going to be intentional grounding because the ball did not cross the line of scrimmage. So you can throw it away as long as it goes across the line of scrimmage. And Casey Clawson's trying to set up the screen. It's dead right here. So he throws it away, which is okay, but the ball has to go across the line. And this may be a momentary reprieve for LSU. The ball marked back to the 35 and loss it down. And toward the end of uh, this SEC championship game tonight, we'll be selecting the Army most valuable player of the game. Nick Saban opts to go for it fourth of the foot from the 23. His defense really has to take advantage of that penalty. That's about the worst penalty that Tennessee could have gotten right there. Second and 23, Clawson back, looks deep. Comes right, he'll run. Nice defense. Good coverage downfield by the secondary. Forced Clawson out of the pocket. The SEC Championship presented by Dr. Pepper, third and 22. I think if you're Tennessee right here, now you're playing for a field goal. You take a look if you got a chance to throw to the end zone, but settle for about a 10 yard gain and hope to get three more points on the board. Out of the gun, Casey Clawson gets the snap. Here comes the blitz. Stand strong, he's got Washington, can't hang on at the 15-yard line. Let him just a touch too much. 
Randall Gay, number 21, defending. Now, if they try a field goal from here, it would be 52 yards. Alex Wall, season long, is 44. They might opt to go. Well, will we see the punter or? No, I think they're going to let Alex Walls try yep. to kick it. Now, remember, we're indoors. And his career high was what? <laughs> 49 yards, I believe. What is this, the Aflac question I, of the night? I'm giving myself Aflac questions. <laughs> I can tell you it's season long. <laughs> 51 yards. This will attempt. be from 51. Here's Walls with the kick. That's got enough distance. Now we know what his now career long is. <laughs> I probably did the dumbest thing I've ever done as a coach in terms of coaching decision in the game. Here's Davey. Here comes the blitz from the corner. Davey steps out of it, still being chased. Are you over 50? Would you like to get up to 33% more income in retirement? Then call now for this free book, Annuity Do's and Don'ts for Baby Boomers, from a leading financial firm on maximizing your income in retirement. That's right, free. This free book reveals little-known secrets about annuity strategies in simple-to-understand terms that will help you make the right choices before buying an annuity. And it's free! Call right now for your free book, and as a bonus, we'll also throw in a free annuity rate report. We researched over 1,200 annuities and summarized the rates and benefits of annuities from financially strong insurers. Again, that's annuity do's and don'ts for baby boomers and a free annuity rate report, both absolutely free, for calling Annuity General today. Supplies are limited. Call now. Call 800-619-6261. That's 800-619-6261. Guys, got hair loss? I know what you're thinking. Should I shave my head? Comb it over? Wear a hat? Just stop. This isn't 1970. Keep your hair and your confidence because Bosley, America's number one hair restoration expert, can give you your real hair back permanently. Check them out today because they're giving away an absolutely free information kit and a free gift card to everyone who texts DONE to 642-642. Dude, you don't have to look like your dad because this isn't your dad's hair loss treatment. People all over the country trust Bosley because they're ahead of the curve. They use the latest technology to give you your real hair back. And the best part, Bosley's permanent solution is protected by the Bosley Guarantee. Let them show you for free how awesome your hair could look with an absolutely free information kit and a gift card for $250 off. Text DONE to 642-642. Ask about the Bosley Guarantee. That's D-O-N-E to 642-642. We got ahead, I think, 7 nothing in the game. And Tennessee came back twice and got the ball and just scored fast, man. I mean, fast, like I'm saying, oh, man, this is something. Here's the pass deep for Washington. Wow. Touchdown, Tennessee. We take the kickoff now behind 14-7. We get the ball in 20, and I'm thinking we got to do something on offense because these guys are going to run us right out of the gym. Third and short, the toss. Davis coming left. Caught and dropped. I probably did the dumbest thing I've ever done as a coach in terms of coaching decision in the game that almost numbed me for a whole quarter. I can't imagine Nick Saban going for it, but it looks to me like, no. Yes, no, he is. The mistake here could be very, very critical for LSU. So we get fourth down and this much. John Henderson's playing on their defensive line. Rohan Davies, our quarterback. And we're on our own 29-yard line, and I say, Let's go for it. Went for it, bobbled the snap. I don't know that he got it. We go for it. They put John Henderson on nose. He knocks the center back, knocks Rohan Davy back. We don't make it on fourth and an inch. They get the ball on 29 yard line. Did not get it, not even close. Fourth 
and a foot from your own 23 in the SEC championship game. An injured quarterback, Rohan Davey, LeBrandon Tofield not there. When we go out, stop them, sack the quarterback, they kick a field goal, now we're behind 17-7. And for five minutes at least in that second quarter when I made that decision to go for it on fourth down, I'm saying, that's the dumbest thing you've ever done. And all the time you've been a coach, that's the poorest decision, the dumbest thing. But the amazing thing is how we played after that. Take a look at that now. Not many yards for LSU. This is a, a team that has gained over 5,000 yards this year already. Number six in the country coming in, averaging 466 yards per game. And as he was in the first game between these two in September, LeBrandon Tofield on the bench with an injury. This time a sprained knee. Here's Davey. Here comes the blitz from the corner. Davey steps out of it, still being chased by Albert Hainsworth. And it is incomplete. It'll be second and ten. Tennessee blitzing, bringing pressure. Jabari Greer came from the outside and was unblocked. Had a shot on Rohan Davey, but couldn't make the sack. You see, right now, Tennessee is not worrying too much about the running game. With a 10-point lead and only a minute 58 left, they're expecting pass all the time. And so they can pin their ears back and go after the quarterback. Second and 10, 158 to go. Rohan Davey has been sacked once. He's 8 of 16. Here comes the blitz. Goes deep, tipped, incomplete, intended for Myers. Jabari Greer got a hand on it, and there was enormous pressure on Davey, who was dropped after he let the ball go. Well, again, this is this look that Tennessee showed last week against Florida, where they got two down linemen, and then everybody else is moving around. And they're trying to create confusion. See, these two guys are down. Now, these guys are just moving around and circling and stepping in and stepping out. They don't bring a lot of people, but they get two guys that get a hit on the quarterback. And all they're doing is trying to create confusion and put a lick on the quarterback. One little inside football talk. What's that? It's called the Prowler defense. Oh, no. the Prowler no. defense. Little inside stuff. Here's Davey. Let's it go. Caught. Josh Reed. Inside the 30 to the 29. What a player. I mean, he is a fun guy to watch. A competitor. I mean, first of all, Rohan Davey has to do all he can do to get away from John Henderson. Here's Henderson from an up position. I mean, he's scary enough anyway and just goes right by the center. He chases Davey up into the pocket, and then Davey finds his main guy, Josh Reed, for another big play for the Tigers. Here's Davey being chased. Overstreet is back on the field. Reed wide open, and the pressure caused a short pass. Yeah, Will Overstreet was back in the ball game, and he got the pressure. Day, uh, Reed was wide open, but Davey just could not get enough on the football. Watch the pressure from Overstreet. Ran right through the tackle. And Davey, you see, he couldn't set his feet, so he couldn't get enough on the football. And Reed unable to stop and come back for the catch. Second and ten. Reed for the night. Four for 56. And for Tennessee, 12 pressures on the quarterback, Rohan Davey. Here's that same defensive look. And here comes the pressure from the backside. Burnett, the ball in the end zone, is tipped and incomplete. Rashad Baker, the defender. Nice coverage. Double coverage. Trying to get the football to Corey Webster that time. Rohan Davey is, is taking a pounding. Tennessee is really coming after him. Kevin Burnett in pursuit after the throw with the hit. And Davey, uh, he is getting knocked around. They did this to him up in Knoxville, and they're getting it done again today. At the end of the play, Rohan Davey hit by Kevin Burnett, taken down, and he is on the bench in anguish now. Third down and 10. Out. Of the field to play for the second time, Matt Mock has taken his spot. Third and ten from the 29. Here's Mock. Caught and dropped. He gains two yards. It'll be fourth down. Now remember that John Corbello missed one badly from yeah. 43 earlier. Yeah, I'm not sure they, they try that. Well, it looks like they're going to. Nick Saban wants to get more points. As you look at Rohan Davey, again, he is he's hurt. 
Here's John Corbello missed from 43 for his career now 8 of 17 from between the 40 and the 49 and this one will be measured as 44. This one better. Nice. Much better. Big lift for LSU. They get the three back that right. they lost on that aborted fourth and a foot from the 23. Here comes the blitz. Mock can't get out. What are you doing paying a football coach over a million dollars? I tried a new laxative that's both gentle and fast. New great tasting Dalkalax soft juice works naturally with the water in your body in as little as 30 minutes. Puts you comfortably in control. New Dalkalax soft juice. Hey, hey, can I go? Hold on one second. Sure. Okay. Okay. Safe driver save 40%. Guys, guys. Check it out. Safe driver save 40%. Safe driver save 40%. Safe driver save 40%. That's safe driver save 40%. It is, that's safe driver save 40%. It's right there. It's him, he's here. He's right here. Hi. Hi. Hey. <laughs> that's totally him. That's him. That's totally the guy. Safe drivers do save 40%. Click or call for a quote today. Are you stuck with a low credit score causing you to be denied credit? Then do what Terrence did, and all it takes is one call to get started. My score wasn't where I needed it to be. I called and spoke with one of the representatives, and we just had a good conversation, and I, I liked what he was saying. Don't let a low credit score hold you back. I'm seeing the deletions, and I'm getting the reports, so I know something's being done. And make the call for your free credit evaluation. Call 1-800-835-0575. That's 1-800-835-0575. Taking a trip in the next 12 months? Airlines are under tremendous pressure and they're practically giving away their unsold seats. Like every crisis, this one will end too. But right now is the best time to take advantage of giveaway ticket prices on their unsold seats. We're not allowed to publish these low fares online. The only way to get these rock bottom giveaway prices is to call. So phone low cost airlines now for airline ticket prices you may never see again. The American Red Cross urgently needs blood and platelet donations and asks all healthy donors to schedule an appointment to give now. With the coronavirus outbreak, it is important to maintain a sufficient blood supply. Your blood donation is critical and can help save lives. Please, schedule an appointment today. Download the Blood Donor app, visit redcrossblood.org, or call 1-800-RED-CROSS today. You can make a difference. Built to connect us, even if we're apart. Built to uplift us, no matter where you're watching. Built by your cheers, that still inspire. Built to overcome, because that's what champions do. Even though you can't be at the open, you are still a part of it. Tune in and download our app to experience more. The U.S. Open, built for fans everywhere. Rohan Davey has been injured twice in this game. First on uh, an out-of-bounds play. Yeah, this is unfortunate. I mean, it, that, that could have been a penalty. I mean, it was a late hit, an unnecessary hit that first injured him. And then the hit by Kevin Burnett later in the first half. And, uh, and Matt Mock. 22-year-old freshman from Jasper, Indiana, recruited by Nick Saban to Michigan State, opted to go into baseball. He played for four years. And now a freshman at LSU. Off his back foot, fires it for Clayton at the 38-yard line. The thing that Tennessee has to remember about Matt Mock now is that he is very athletic, and he's very elusive in the backfield. He buys himself some time with the little roll and then makes the accurate throw on the move. Here's Mock again. Rashad Baker was shaken up when he made the tackle. But that's a gain of 20 and a first down at the 37-yard line. Here's Baker. Bruised right hand, we're told. On first down and 10. Shaky snap. Here comes Eddie Moore with the pressure. Mock incomplete for Josh Reed. Yeah, you call it the snap. That, that broke up the whole timing. That's a timing route. Hit your fifth step and throw the curl route. 
And because of the bobbled snap, it just ruined the timing of the whole play. And the result was a high throw. Well, the low for the season was in a loss at home to Ole Miss when Josh Reed was held to three catches for 85 yards. In every other game, 10 in number, he's been over 100 yards in receptions. Second and 10. Comes the blitz. Quarterback draw. Nice move. Mock weaves his way to the 30-yard line. It's uh, three yards short of the first down. That's a gain of seven, and Andre Lott, number 30, made the tackle. Pretty good run. Pretty good call. Rodney Reed's going to get a good block, number 60, coming from the left tackle. Watch the trap block by 60 on Burnett, and Mock able to cut right inside of it. And you can see he's a very good runner in the open field. We even saw him run some option in the game he played against Florida. Third and three, early moments, third quarter in a seven-point game. Third and three. This could even be an option here with Matt Mock. Sends Clayton in motion to the right side. Here comes the corner blitz. Mock down low incomplete. Intended for the tight end, Robert Royal. It'll be fourth down. You've got to get this one up a little bit. And that's a tough catch for a big target. Robert Royal is six foot five, and he had to reach down to his shoestrings. And Matt Mock just a little hurried on that throw. Uh, Corbello is one of two in this ball game, and uh, Nick Saban having gone for a first down on fourth and a foot in the second quarter and not getting it has decided to uh, attempt his 47-yard field goal from John Corbello. One of two for the day. Hit from 44. Maybe. Yes! That thing honked as it went through. <laughs> LSU was sort of a mess before Nick Saban got there. Nick Saban, 50 years of age, in his second year, having served five previous seasons as the head coach at Michigan State. And Nick never even visited the LSU campus before he took the job. Yeah, we knew who Nick Saban was, but uh, the Nick Saban of 2001 was not quite the Nick Saban of today. I remember when Joe Dean, LSU's athletic director, hired him. He paid him this ungodly sum of $1.2 million a year. What are you doing paying a football coach over a million dollars? Well, that's what he had to pay him to get him away from Michigan State. He uh, had coached in the NFL under Bill Belichick, so he had uh, some, some experience there. But a lot of people said, well, the, when he came to LSU, well, he's just this kind of six and five coach. You know, he hasn't really put it together. And what he did is, is he got those guys to buy in. He got those guys to play his brand of football in a time where his brand of football you know, was, was sort of different from everybody else. And for LSU, for those players, that's what they needed because the raw talent was always there. It's just never properly harnessed. And, and Nick Saban finally did that. And he certainly validated being hired by Joe Dean. One reason for this current four game winning streak by the LSU Tigers is how well they have played in the third quarters of games in the second half of the season. In the first five games, outscored by 30 points, but in the last six, they've dominated. Yep. The worst third quarter they had was up in Knoxville. They had a 7-6 halftime lead, and it quickly turned into a 26-7 deficit in the third quarter. Here's first down. Davis gets the handoff and comes left. He's got some room in the open field. First down, LSU at the 35-yard line. A gain of 14. A nice call by the LSU coaches because they can't get completely away from the run. They're only down four, so they've got lots of time. They're right in the ball game. They can't put Matt Mock in a pass every down situation. A little draw out of the shotgun, and Dominic Davis in for Tofield makes a nice run. Got to keep trying to mix it up and take a little bit of the sting out of that Tennessee defense. That's a gain of 14, and Matt Mock will run this first down play out of the gun. A three down line set for Tennessee. They will bring five. Mock comes left, overshoots Josh Reed at the 31 yard line. And time now for the Home Depot game recap. Boston of Tennessee, 189 yards, two touchdowns. Rohan Davy, Jill just told you he's been taken to the hospital for precautionary reasons. 9 of 20, 84 yards. Washington with seven receptions already. Corbello has hit two field goals, including, Todd, a career long of 47. Yes, 47 yards. 
There's that formation again. Two tight ends, three wideouts, no running backs. But remember, Matt Mock, a very good runner at quarterback. Second down and ten. And Mock will run. Goes right, gets a good block from Josh Reed. And settles for a nine-yard gain to the 26-yard line. Eddie Moore, number 37, with the tackle. So you got no running backs. Tight end, tight end, three wideouts. But remember, this guy is a very talented runner. And he runs behind his backup tight end, Joe DiMaggio, number 87, who gets a great block on the corner and gets him close to the first down. Mark has picked up 27 rushing. Smokey might be barking here on third down and one. Yep, answered the call. Davis, close, very close. I think he got underneath enough to, to get it, but... You know, you hear the talk about this in football, and you hear coaches say this all the time. You know, when, when the stars go down, somebody else has to pick up the flag and keep it going. And right now, Dominic Davis and Matt Mock are picking up the flag for LSU. That is enough for a first down and 10 at the 25. Nick Saban, 50 years of age, in his second year, having served five previous seasons as the head coach at Michigan State. Stung by criticism, from the fans after they lost at home to Ole Miss. Really stunned. But his team rebounded with four consecutive. They trail by four here. Mark, right side, tight end. Joe DiMaggio. No, it's incomplete. You got to hang on to this. I mean, uh, you know you're going to get hit. You're a big guy. Hang on to that football. Uh, DiMaggio only two catches for the season. Dropped one like yeah. that last week. A good hit by Teddy Gaines, but it's so important for LSU to have some productivity on first down. You get a nice play called there on first down, and you can't come up with the play. Second and 10. 17-13, 340 to go, third quarter. Again, three down, two down, now three for Tennessee. Here comes the blitz. Mark can't get out. Good downfield coverage helped the sack. Eddie Moore, Kevin Burnett. Yeah, excellent coverage downfield. Nobody open. Josh Reed couldn't break free. Michael Clayton couldn't break free. Matt Mock held it as long as he could. But the coverage downfield, too good for Tennessee. Loss of three. 3-10 to go, third quarter. Third and 13. Here we go. Three wides to the left, two to the right. Mark hit as he lets it go. Fourth down. Eddie Moore, number 37. Eddie Moore came unblocked that time from the backside of Matt Mark. We've seen Eddie Moore in the backfield a couple times tonight. He's going to come from right over here unblocked. The tackle blocks down. The guard, Peterman, helps with the center, and nobody works out to get the linebacker. Particularly on the blind side of your quarterback, you don't want somebody running in there free. John Corbello, two of three from 44 and 47. This one 45 yards out. He's done it again. Attention, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services has officially authorized new benefits that Medicare Advantage plans may include. To get the benefits you deserve, you can call the Medicare Coverage Helpline. Hi, I'm Joe Namath. If you're on Medicare, this is important information. I called the Medicare Coverage Helpline and they instantly looked up my coverage. In this one simple call, they offered to enroll me in a plan that includes rides to medical appointments, private home aides, doctors and nurses visits by telephone, and even home delivered meals. The plan also includes dental, vision, hearing, and prescription drug coverage, all at no additional cost. Don't delay. Call to see if the new benefits are available in your area. Call the number on your screen now. It's free. 
Call 1-800-821-6476. That's 1-800-821-6476 now. You've crafted, burnt cookies, called your mom, made a mask from a t-shirt, trained your dog to dance. You've Zoomed, you've posted, watched that tiger thing twice, stocked up on toilet paper, dyed your kid's hair, made hand sanitizer. Now, it's time to get out and play. Tennis. It lets you keep your social distance without being socially distant. So call a friend, grab a racket. It's time to get out and play. Here's an important message from the Diabetes Solution Center. Diabetics understand all too well the pain of pricking your fingers. But now, by wearing a small remote device called a Continuous Glucose Monitor, or CGM, you can immediately reduce your pain. It's easy to use and helps you make more accurate diabetes treatment decisions. If you are testing your blood sugar four or more times daily, injecting insulin three or more times daily, or using an insulin pump, call the Diabetes Solution Center right now to learn about this groundbreaking new CGM technology. And if you have Medicare, you can get a new CGM at little to no out-of-pocket cost. Shipping is free and we'll even bill your insurance company for you. If you are testing your blood sugar four or more times daily, injecting insulin three or more times daily, or using an insulin pump, call the Diabetes Solution Center right now to learn how you can get your own continuous glucose monitor or CGM at little to no out-of-pocket cost. Now here is Rick Clawson. He's a lefty. Yeah. And they a said, prospect. Yeah, they said to him, hey, we want you to give us as good a look as you can for our brother, for your brother. And he said, well, it's, it's hard. It's hard for me to run that slow or to make the ball wobble like that. <laughs> and there's a third brother, Jimmy. That's Jimmy wearing number seven. Look at the cap, LSU. And the jersey, half Tennessee, <laughs> half LSU. He Kids said, I'm, got I'm, I think I'm getting a ring no matter who wins. He's playing both sides. Fumble, fumble. Picked up by Damian James, number five. First turnover of the night. Travis Stevens, who had problems with fumbles earlier in the year. He's now fumbled six times this season, and five have been lost. Well, Travis is going to lose his shoe and the football. Byron Dawson's going to get the ball out right there. Travis loses his shoe and the ball, and what a huge turnover for this maligned LSU defense. They've been playing tough against the run. Now they go one step better and get the turnover in great field position for Matt Mock in the offense. First down and 10, trailing by one with 1.29 to go third quarter. Mock, handoff. Out of the backfield, Dominic Davis surges inside the 30, down at the 27, a gain of 11. Where an LSU has got more intensity than Tennessee here in the third quarter. I mean, they came out of the locker room with it, and they've been more physical as a result of it as well. Dominic Davis taking the place of Tofield. You see, in the first five games, they didn't capitalize on turnovers very much. Last six, a different story. They would love to capitalize on this one. 107 to go in the third. First and 10, LSU, Mock. Playing in place of an injured Rohan Davy. Gets the snap and hands it off to Dominic Davis, who was hit from behind and dropped by the middle linebacker, Dominic Stevenson. Travis Stevens was a starter as a sophomore, but had two fumbles in the game against UAB, was benched, played behind Jamal Lewis and Travis Henry. Six fumbles this season. He actually went a stretch where he had 195 carries without a fumble, but this one bobbled and dropped. Loss of two in the last play, second and 12. Clayton goes right. Myers and Reed come to the left. And this is Josh Reed right here. Might be time for him to make a play. Three down for Tennessee. See how many they bring. They'll bring five. Corner blitz. Mark dodges it, pulls up and fires. Robert Royal is popped and dropped at the 24-yard line. It's John Henderson running out in the open field to make a play. He dropped into coverage like a zone blitz. I mean, he was playing over the nose and dropped into coverage and then showed a little agility getting to the sideline. 
Now, we had a little different kind of offense that they weren't ready for because Matt Mock's athleticism. And the quarterback draw him walk inside the 10, the 5. Now, I thought Tennessee did a poor job of adjusting to it. Are you over 50? Would you like to get up to 33% more income in retirement? Then call now for this free book, Annuity Do's and Don'ts for Baby Boomers, from a leading financial firm on maximizing your income in retirement. That's right, free! This free book reveals little-known secrets about annuity strategies in simple-to-understand terms that will help you make the right choices before buying an annuity. And it's free! Call right now for your free book, and as a bonus, we'll also throw in a free annuity rate report. We researched over 1,200 annuities and summarized the rates and benefits of annuities from financially strong insurers. Again, that's annuity do's and don'ts for baby boomers and a free annuity rate report, both absolutely free, for calling Annuity General today. Supplies are limited. Call now. Call 800-619-6261. That's 800-619-6261. Oh my gosh. Wow. Who am I? Wow. Is that really me? <laughs> Hi, I'm Jonathan Greenhut, the CEO of Plexiderm. All it takes is 10 minutes to reduce the appearance of under eye bags, wrinkles, and crow's feet. The instant results are from naturally based silicates found in shell clay. Once applied, your skin tightens and firms. Take action with our Plexiderm 10 minute challenge. Try it today for only $14.95 plus get free shipping. Visit plexidermtrial.com or call the number on your screen. What can you expect from ButcherBox? 100% grass-fed beef, organic free-range chicken, heritage breed pork, and so much more. From farmers who believe in raising animals with care, with no antibiotics or added hormones, ever. All with free shipping right to your door. Together, we can make a difference, one meal at a time. Visit ButcherBox.com to learn more. Hi, America. Hi, America. Hey, America. During this crisis, over 37 million people don't have access to nutritious food. That's one in 12 seniors and one in seven children. But the good news is we all can help with Feed in America. Their network of 200 food banks are up and running. Distributing food to people and communities they serve across the country. Please visit feedingamerica.org to locate a food bank in your community. Together. Together. Let's feed the love. Welcome back to the final quarter of the SEC Championship game presented by Dr. Pepper, 17-16. A third and four LSU trailing by one at the 22-yard line. You know who I like on this LSU team? I like Steven Peterman, the left guard. He's a former defensive lineman, plays with a lot of passion and enthusiasm, getting the crowd fired up in this third down. On third down, Mark retreats, wants to set up a screen, fires it to Josh Reed. And how about the tackle, and how about the effort by Josh wow. Reed? Wow! What a play by the playmaker. He did not have the first down when he caught this football. Andre Lott was right with him, number 30. It's all the way across the field. Mock buys time. Jabari Greer, the first guy there. Lott helps. Neither one of them can get Josh Reed on the ground. Strong, strong legs on Josh Reed. Reed with four catches for 60 yards. And the yards after the catch, significant. First down and 10 after that nine-yard gain. Here's the snap. And the quarterback, draw him walk. Inside the 10, the 5. LSU has reclaimed the lead. Nick Saban deciding to go for two, but watch now on this play. Hainsworth has him, and he just can't quite grab the ankles, and Matt Mock shows his ability to run the football. He has a good feel for getting behind his blockers and running more like a running back than he does a quarterback. How about the grit this kid's showing? I mean, he's not a youngster. He's 22 years old, former baseball player. Trying to make it a seven-point lead now on the two-point play. 
Hart says go for two when you're up by five. Trying to make this 24-17. Rob Sales in at uh, center now. He snaps it back. Here comes the blitz into the end zone. Reed, they got two more. And there is joy erupting in four locations that I can think of. Baton Rouge, Boulder, Eugene, and Lincoln, Nebraska. And some frustrated volunteers walking off the field. Helmets off, heads down. Watch the two-point play. They brought pressure. It's picked up nicely by LSU. And Josh Reed somehow springs free on the outside. Matt Mock comes in, and it was almost like LSU had a special package for him, and nobody knew what to expect. It was almost like he was the changeup quarterback before the era of the changeup quarterback. Corner blitz, Mock dodges it, pulls up and fires. Now, we had a little different kind of offense that they weren't ready for because Matt Mock's athleticism. On third down, Mock retreats, wants to set up a screen, fires it to Josh Reed. When he came in the game, he didn't have a reputation as a very good passer. So what they were going to do was they were going to run quarterback draws. And I thought Tennessee did a poor job of adjusting to it. And the quarterback draw, Mark, inside the 10, the 5. LSU has reclaimed the lead. Now you say, well, they weren't ready for quarterback draws. Well, Rohan Davey could run a quarterback draw, so you should have been somewhat prepared. Rohan was a pocket quarterback, and, and Matt had that, had that nimbleness, that escapability. And Tennessee really wasn't prepared for that. Quarterback draw, nice move, Mark. Weaves his way to the 30-yard line. But he made some huge plays, mostly with his legs, not with his passing. And he didn't throw many passes in that game. But most of the time when he hurt Tennessee, it was with those quarterback draws. And he was able to run the clock, keep some drives alive, and give LSU a little bit of confidence that they'd have a chance to win the football game. There's Matt Mark, 22-year-old freshman. Second touchdown run tonight. Casey Clawson, four previous times this year, has brought Tennessee from behind in the fourth quarter. Five times. Here's Clawson, flushed. He'll run. And narrowly avoids having a helmet hit. Well, SEC championships. Tennessee appearing in its third. They've had to come from behind twice. Tennessee and Auburn in the 97 game in Atlanta. Peyton Manning for the night. 373 yards, four touchdowns including this game winner, 73 yards to Marcus Nash in the fourth. The ball's one by one. Then in 1998, they had to come from behind as well. Second down and seven here. LSU's done a nice job of stepping up their defensive pressure. Four pressures on the quarterback here in the second half. Quick flip. Short stop. It'll be third down. Mentioned that 98 game. Of course, that was the year that Tennessee won the national title. They were facing Mississippi State in the title game in Atlanta. Trailed 14-10 with 8.43 left. T. Martin threw two fourth quarter touchdown passes. Tennessee won it by 10 and went on to win the national championship. Vern, look at the body language of these two teams. LSU jumping around, bouncing around. Tennessee kind of walking around, heads down, hands on their hips. If they don't make this third down here, this thing could get away from them. Third and six. Here comes the rush. Lejeune got to Clawson. Catches made. Casey Clawson nailed by Norman Lejeune. And he found Washington for a gain of 17. Well, they've been able to step up the pressure, but they still are having trouble covering Kelly Washington. Lejeune with a huge hit. And then often Hughes, who his own guy, got him from the other side. But they cannot cover Kelly Washington. The in route, the big target again. And a huge first down for Tennessee. Washington 9 for 140 tonight and a touchdown. First and 10 at the 49. Motion. Now there was a little movement in the defensive line. And then Fred Weary reacted to it. For Tennessee. We'll see uh, who gets called. Dead ball, false start on the offense, five yard penalty, first down. Another mental mistake for Tennessee. Seventh penalty for the night. A Tennessee team that went into Gainesville, won a thriller 34 32. 
in this encounter against an LSU team that defeated Auburn to get here. LSU has reclaimed the lead 24-17. They have done so without their starting quarterback, Rohan Davey. Matt Mock has scored two rushing touchdowns in his place. First and 15. Lawson, right side. Big tight end, Jason Witten. Well, this is the second seeded BCS team playing tonight. Tennessee, right behind them, Nebraska, Colorado, Oregon. Proponents of order and uh, <laughs> advocates of the BCS, hoping Tennessee prevails. Those who like a little chaos in their life, wondering what will happen if Tennessee loses to LSU. Will it be Colorado winners over Nebraska? Will it be a Nebraska team? that did not get into its own Big 12 championship game? Or could it be an Oregon team that's lost only once that to Stanford and won a big road game at Washington State? Here's Clawson, deep right side. Contact. No foul. Incidental. Uncatchable, Uncatchable pass, okay. too. And the defender has a right to be there. Actually, Washington ran into the defender. They've had trouble with this route, but Randall Gay, he's allowed to be there and Kelly Washington just kind of ran into him. Plus the ball is about nine yards out of bounds. So, Last time we mentioned Dante Stallworth's name. I know, it's amazing. I mean, when Kelly Washington had the big game in September, Stallworth was hurt, Eric Parker was hurt. He was the only guy to go to. Now, Stallworth, to only two catches for 13 yards. Been very, very quiet on the other side. Third and nine from the 50. Five-man rush. Goes deep, there's Stallworth! He heard us. 17 and a first down at the 33. They've hit Kelly Washington on the in route. This time they go to Stallworth. He's working on Lionel Thomas, who's a strong safety. Now Lionel's in pretty good position, but Dante just able to go up high and catch this one in his hands. Watch him elevate and catch that with his hands. Nice play by Dante Stallworth. Gain of 17, a first and 10. The ball at the 33-yard line, and Clawson will go from the gun. Scott Wells snaps it back. Clawson looking left, finds Stallworth again. Inside the 20, a first down at the 16-yard line, and another gain of 17. And a change of philosophy for Tennessee. Philip Fulmer and Randy Sanders deciding, hey, we're not going to beat this team by being in I formation and tight ends. We need to spread them out and throw the football. This is not necessarily our personality, but this is the best way for us to attack this LSU defense. Spread them out, put our quarterback in the shotgun, and throw the football. Back-to-back -back gains of 17 yards, a first down at the 16, trailing by seven with 10.20 to go. And again, Clawson will go from the shotgun. Blitz by LSU, Max Blitz over the middle, incomplete. Flag down, Bobby Graham, they're going to rule that Damian James made contact. I think he's got a holding. I think he got a grab on the back of the jersey. I don't think it was interference, but I think he got a hold of the jersey. Again, this is Casey Clawson's game now. They've taken the ball out of Travis Stevens' hands, and they put it in the hands of Casey Clawson. And they said, you're going to have to win it. There's Jimmy Clawson. He likes the call. Casey told us he thinks he's going to be the best athlete of all of them. Yep. You got Rick at LSU. You got Casey at starter at Tennessee. A little 13-year-old Jimmy is also a quarterback. Parents are obviously here, Jim and Kathy, along with about 25 relatives and friends. And the ball on the four, first and goal. Bartholomew is the setback. There's Trev Falk, middle linebacker, Clawson. Deep left side, overthrows Kelly Washington. Now... Tennessee has gone strictly to shotgun and throwing the football. They tried to get the corner route to Kelly Washington, a little overthrow. The thing that they have to be aware of, if you're LSU now, is maybe even a quarterback draw, a run out of the shotgun. He's not known for his running ability, much more of a thrower, but when he's had to make a few big runs, he's done it. Travis Stevens, whose fumble set up the go-ahead touchdown, is back in the backfield. Alongside Casey Clawson. 
Here's the snap. They go right side. Dropped by Stallworth. That, uh, that should have been caught. Yeah, well, no, Travis Daniels, I think, made a good play. I think he was able to get in front and make, get a hand on the football. Casey thought he was going to get a sure touchdown, but watch Travis Daniels. Let's see if he gets a hand on the ball. He got his left hand in there and got a deflection. He got his hand on the on the body too. But, yes, but he did make a nice play. Yeah. He's the true freshman, Travis Daniels. Nice play by him. Eric Parker breaks on third down and goal goes wide right. Watch quarterback draw here. Third and goal from the four. Left side, Washington incomplete. Demetrius Hookman. It will be fourth down. Pressure. The pressure by LSU forced an early throw by Casey Clawson. They've been able to step up their pressure here in the second half. Jarvis Green gets in, number 59, and forces a quick throw. That is just good pressure by the senior, Jarvis Green. And Alex Walls comes on to attempt the uh, three-pointer. First and goal from the four. Twice to Washington, once to Stallworth. They'll settle for a an attempt at three. This from 21 yards out. They got three. They needed seven and wanted seven. 9.55 to go in this one. Here's Clawson across the middle. Stallworth! Fumble. Fumble! Fumble! Looks like they picked the wrong getaway driver. They'll be paying for this for a long time. They will, but with accident forgiveness. Allstate won't raise your rates just because of an accident, even if it's your fault. Cut! Sonny. So good? Line! The desert never lies. Isn't that what I said? Uh, no, you were talking about Allstate and insurance. I just, when I... Let's try again. I'm ready back to one. Accident forgiveness from Allstate. Click or call for a quote today. At Sports Center, our goal is to embrace the latest technology. Whatever enhances the viewing experience. Virtual reality, 3D, we want to do that. Welcome into Sports Center. I'm Tony Collins. We got a little bit of everything for you today. In the NBA, our insider Adrian Wojnarowski with the very latest happening around the association. Also in baseball, what you need to know on the diamond. We got Buster only Tim Kirchin. And in the NFL, camps are starting. Big night of sports. We got baseball. We got college football. It's still early. Uh, we're in the beta stage. Taking a trip in the next 12 months? Airlines are under tremendous pressure and they're practically giving away their unsold seats. Like every crisis, this one will end too. But right now is the best time to take advantage of giveaway ticket prices on their unsold seats. We're not allowed to publish these low fares online. The only way to get these rock bottom giveaway prices is to call. So phone low cost airlines now for airline ticket prices you may never see again. Is gangster. Just start. Now let's take a look at the CBS Sports Line stat of the game. Now, the rush defense, LSU doing a nice job stopping the run. Having some problems with the pass, but they forced Tennessee into a pass-only mode right now. Bartholomew is in the backfield. Stevens remains on the bench. First down and ten. Down by four. Here's Clawson across the middle. Stallworth! Fumble. Fumble! It's a fumble. LSU recovers. Demetrius Hookman with the pop. 
Now remember, Dante Stallworth missed some games early in the year because of a broken wrist that he suffered in the first game against Syracuse. He's not wearing a big cast anymore, but he still has a little trouble protecting the football. And that time, Hookman able to knock it out, and Ryan Clark comes up with the football. Second Tennessee turnover of the night, both fumbles. One, Travis Stevens led for the go-ahead touchdown. This one might have prevented Tennessee's go-ahead touchdown. And the clock now becomes a factor with eight minutes and 30 seconds. Matt Mock is thinking, make some first downs and use the clock as an ally. Quarterback draw again, Mock. Looked like a high hurdler there for a moment as he leaps over Rodney Reed and into the arms of Will Overstreet. 8.18 to go. It's his throwing arm or his throwing elbow that he's holding and rubbing a little bit. Maybe took a shot on the funny bone there. Matt Mock has done everything that Nick Saban could have possibly hoped that he could do for his team. I mean, he came in cold off the bench. He got him their first touchdown. And he has led them to a four-point lead with eight minutes left in the ballgame. Second down, six. Rob Sale in its center. They hand it off, and they've got a big hole. Dominic Davis romps across the 50, down at the 48, a gain of 13. See, basically, LSU has two running backs in the game right now. It only looks like one with Dominic Davis, but Mock is an excellent runner, too. Dwayne Pierce with a nice block, but that's mostly just Dominic Davis. Invite the ends upfield to rush the passer and slip the draw in behind him. A first down and 10 at the 48 with 7.24 to go. Uh, Peterman, left guard move, just rocked back in his stance. Well, prior to the fumble, last year's Outland Trophy winner, John Henderson, who declined to go to the NFL draft, spurned the money, said he wanted a ring. He did not get one in 1998 because he was a partial qualifier, academically ineligible, during that NCAA championship season year. And he has been one of their great leaders. I mean, he has tried to keep this team focused. You know, this is why he came back. Now, he's not in the game right now. They're spelling him, resting him. I'll guarantee you he'll be in there on the next third down situation, though. First and 15, we near the seven-minute mark. Clock is still rolling for LSU. There comes the rush from the corner. The pass tipped incomplete. Oh, wow. Julian Battle had it. The ball got into his chest. Josh Reed stopped. And Matt Mock thought he was breaking out, and the ball hit Julian Battle right between the one and the four. My, my. Second and 15. Julian Battle trying to get a trip back to the West Coast. He played at Los Angeles Valley College, yeah. junior college transfer. And he was a wide receiver his first year and a half there. Maybe so. why he's a defensive back now. <laughs> Maybe so. Second and 15. And again, three down. Dominic Davis darts into the secondary. He's tackled at the 45. That's going to bring up a huge third down with 6.49 to go and the clock still running. How about Dominic Davis? You know, we, we've talked about how Matt Mock has picked up the slack for Rohan Davy, but how about Dominic Davis? 12 carries, 67 yards. Only 16 yards when they played back in September, but he has had to be the guy, and he has answered the challenge tonight. 6.25 to go, third and seven LSU with the ball and the lead, and they are perched at the Tennessee 45. Four wideouts, three down for Tennessee. They will bring four. Across the middle it goes, caught! The big freshman Michael Clayton, number 14. Clayton is the guy all the Tennessee coaches says has made the difference in this LSU offense. He's a freshman at 6'4", 190 pounds with great speed. He runs the in route, and Matt Mock delivers a perfect throw. He's been quiet tonight. 
but that may have been his biggest catch of this 2001 season. And the clock continues to roll. How big was that two-point conversion that Matt Mock completed on their last touchdown? On first down, here's Mock with a quarterback draw. Does manage to hang on to the ball. Hit and dropped. The reason the two-point conversion was so important is because it gives them a four-point lead now after the Tennessee field goal. So Tennessee needs a touchdown. A field goal will do them no good if they get the ball back. I think they're paying attention in Lincoln and Boulder and Eugene. 5.08 to go. Second down and 14. <laughs> I love the sign. LSU might mess things up. Here's deep in the right side. Reed. That's a trip. Flag. That's going to be a flag. First and goal. LSU. Same place the penalty against Josh Reed was in the first quarter. Now bring it back coverage. and march it off. Yeah. Excuse me. Double coverage. The safety coming over the top to help. And he just got there too soon. And both times, I think it was Rashad Baker who made the contact. Josh Reed running the corner out, and Tennessee's in good position. They've got two guys there. It's going to take a perfect throw to make the touchdown. Here's Baker. He's going to come over the top to help. And let's see if he makes contact too early. Reed in the corner. Reed on the ground. Rashad Baker and Andre Lott in coverage. And after the penalty is marked off, it'll be first down at the 13, eighth penalty on Tennessee. Take a look now in the right corner of the end zone. Reed to the corner, he's knocked down. It's Rashad Baker clearly knocked him down before the ball got there. And I had another of my senior moments, too many nights spent in Cincinnati and Pittsburgh. <laughs> Davis darts left, then plunges inside the five. What effort. What effort by Dominic Davis. You know, we talk about LeBrandon Tofield being the tough runner, the guy that breaks the tackles. Dominic Davis more of a make-you-miss guy. But watch him show his strength. Cuts outside, nice cut. And then breaks tackles. Spin, churning the legs. And he just wanted it more than the Tennessee defense on that play. That's all that was about. It was just more effort by Dominic Davis. Second down and one, 76 yards. Davis, the deep back in the eye. DiMaggio, the fullback, quarterback keeper, Mock. He has scored twice tonight. That should be enough for a first and goal. Well, he took a good shot there, too. I mean, his head snapped back at the end of that play, but this kid has been tough. Right now, the most important thing for LSU is to protect the football. The worst thing that could happen to him here is if they lose control of the ball. They have played error-free ball thus far tonight. Davis, the deep back in the eye. Royal, the tight end, goes in motion left. Toss to Davis. Line moves toward the LSU end of the field. Keon Whiteside, number 50, with the tackle. Well, you asked the question at the top of the broadcast, Todd. Would Tennessee be able to mentally forget about the Florida victory, get ready for this one? Would LSU be up to the physical challenge of this game? Well, I think LSU said yes. It got away from them a little bit in the second quarter, but here in the second half, they have been every bit as physical, if not more, than Tennessee. And this has not been the same focused and intense Tennessee team that we saw last week in Gainesville. Second down and goal, power on. Davis, close, but not quite. But Third down. 3.14 to go, 24-20 LSU leading Tennessee and looking at a third and goal from just inside the one. LSU's going to spread them out. I would expect quarterback draw here. Spread them out and see if Mock can find a crease. Snap it quickly. He goes from the spread, empty backfield. Quarterback draw. Did not get in. Fourth down. I think you go for it if you're Nick Saban. You run the clock, and the worst-case scenario is you don't get in, but Tennessee has to go 99 yards for a touchdown to beat you. Tennessee kept enough defenders in against that spread formation to stop it. I don't think you kick the field goal here because you could get that blocked, 
and it could get real bad for you. Worst case scenario here is Tennessee has to go 99 and a half to beat you. Matt Mock in place of an injured Rohan Davey. Dominic Davis, an injured LeBrandon Tofield. It's going to be Davis for an LSU touchdown. Jumping up and down in Boulder and Lincoln and Eugene. Would LSU be physical enough to win this game? It was summed up in that play. Gut check time all the way, four and one, and they get it in. John Corbello with the extra point attempt. Knocks it home. The fumble by Travis Stevens that led to an LSU touchdown. Then the fumble by Stallworth. Tennessee really hasn't been the same since then. If Raising Cane's secret cane sauce was the end zone, no one would ever lose a game. Touchdown. 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 Go for the win this game day with Cane's. Raising Cane's Chicken Fingers. Official chicken of the New Orleans Saints. One love. <laughs> Today tastes like we're a team. <laughs> and it never tasted this good. Geico is giving new and current customers a 15% credit on their motorcycle policies with a Geico give back. And because we're committed for the long haul, the credit lasts your full policy term. The Geico give back, helping riders focus on the road ahead. After being a part of millions of love stories, at K, we believe that nothing should get in the way of love. Shop your way, in-store or online. K Jewelers. Love is unstoppable. Getting exactly what you want on eBay is also about who you're getting it from. And when you're Pete looking for the Mets and 75 Reds, why not get them from Joe, who's been collecting since 76? Find small businesses that share your passion on eBay. Still your best friend, and now your co-pilot. Still a father, but now a friend. Still an electric car, just more electrifying. Still a night out, but everything fits in. Still hard work, just a little easier. Still a legend, just more legendary. Chevrolet, making life's journey just better. At Emirates, we are proud that our promise is to provide a better flying experience to all our customers. But today, fly better does not just mean showers and bars above the clouds, as well as wonderful in-flight service. As routes slowly open up and our fleet takes to the skies again, our number one priority is the safety of both our customers and staff. And to make sure that every precaution is taken when we fly you back to your loved ones. <laughs> This is an LSU team that they've beaten pretty handily you know, during the regular season. It was not a game that they probably thought they were going to lose, especially going in the second half. It was, it was all going their way. You kept expecting they were going to get back in it. They were going to get back in it, but, but they were able to, to force some mistakes from Tennessee. Here's Clawson across the middle. Stallworth! Fumble! 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 That was a, a big moment in the game, and, and, and it was able to you know, allow LSU to have some confidence that they were going to kind of hang on and, and, uh, and pull out the upset. Tennessee really hasn't been the same since then. You know, th that was, again, they were on a miniature dynasty run. They could have set something up and been something great, sort of like Alabama was in the 70s, and we've seen, we've seen teams in Miami's in the past. That's what Tennessee was on the, the cusp of being in that game. LSU really had nothing to lose. Nobody really expected him to be there. This, this guy from Michigan State was coaching LSU named Nick Saban. No one really knew what to expect from him at the time. And I think Tennessee walked in, with a, was a little bit overconfident, and didn't take LSU seriously. And that, I think, ultimately cost them a national championship appearance. Josh Reed, a running back until yeah. the ninth game of his freshman year. And Josh Booty said, I think he ought to go to wide receiver. And he's become one of the best in the country. Here's Clawson. Caught. 
up at the 43-yard line. What does this mean for LSU? You know, we're talking about Oregon and Nebraska and Colorado. It means LSU is headed to New Orleans for the Sugar Bowl against Illinois out of the Big Ten in all likelihood. What a turnaround for LSU. There's a pass, one hopper, 126 to go. They lost on September 29th to this same Tennessee game. Outplayed in the second half, though it came down to a desperation heave at the end of the game. Rohan Davey into the end zone. Then went home, Todd. We saw them against Florida. They were hammered yeah. by the Gators. 44-15. Rohan Davey sacked and hurt in that game. Eight sacks for the Gators. Travis Stevens, a fumble tonight, set up the go-ahead touchdown. And a very sad way it would appear to end a collegiate career for the fifth-year senior. He will have one game left, but not the one he wanted. They air it out down the sideline, incomplete at the 15-yard line for Kelly Washington. Well, this was effective early. This is a true freshman, Travis Daniels. Now he's a, an 18-year-old freshman. <laughs> Kelly Washington is a 22-year-old freshman, so a little bit of difference there, but unable to connect on that one. And Nick Saban said this team has played better all year when they felt like they've had something to prove, when they've been a little bit ticked off. And uh, they came in here tonight feeling like they weren't respected, like nobody gave them much of a chance that Tennessee was on their way to Pasadena. Nick Saban referred to his team as the upstarts. Yeah. And we talked about focus for Tennessee. They were just about flawless last week in Gainesville, but tonight, too many miscues. The intentional grounding, which was huge. They had a first down to 22. The miscommunication on the fourth down play. The fumble by Travis Stevens that led to an LSU touchdown. Then the fumble by Stallworth. Two turnovers, both led to touchdowns. And on top of that, nine penalties against the Tennessee Volunteers tonight. On third down, here's Clawson. Right side, popped, incomplete. Dante Stallworth nailed, hit by Brady James, number 11. LSU turned those turnovers into points. And the, the biggest thing they did in the second half was they were able to turn up the heat a little bit on Casey Clawson. They did a great job all night stopping the run. But in the first half, when they stopped the run, they couldn't pressure Casey Clawson. In the second half, they were able to turn up the pressure enough to force some bad throws and a couple three and outs. Fourth and 15. Flags. LSU first visit ever to this championship game. Philip Fulmer's team has been here twice before. Appears they will lose for the Dead first ball. time. False start on the offense. Five yard penalty, fourth down. You said LSU's first visit here and only the second team from the SEC West to win the championship game. Alabama did it twice in 1992 in the first game and in 1999. And LSU becomes the second team from the West to win the championship. Fourth and 20. Boston, Stallworth. Short of the first down, LSU will get it on downs and will win the SEC championship. Great effort by Dante Stallworth trying to fight for the needed yardage, but not able to get there. You know, it's, this, this season has been so crazy. It's been so exciting. I mean, last week, Tennessee went into Gainesville, a huge underdog with nothing to lose, and played lights out, and then came in tonight with, in a very real sense, everything to lose, because now it appears they won't even get to a BCS Bowl game. I mean, they were headed to the Rose Bowl if they win. Now they may not go to any of the BCS games, possibly headed to Orlando for the Citrus Bowl. Fifty two seconds to go. Tennessee stops the clock for the final time. They are out of timeouts. And the dream dies for Philip Fulmer.
Philip Fulmer would tell you that that's one of the more in his top two or three disappointing losses that has to be right up there because that team was good enough to win the national championship. Fumble, fumble, picked up by Damian James, number five. I mean, they, they had fumbles, uh, they, had, they had some key turnovers. Uh, when they got near the goal line, they couldn't punch it in. Uh, they let that one get away. That's a game LA, uh, that, that Tennessee should have won against LSU. Tennessee was never able after that to reach that level again, in my opinion. They did play for the SEC championship again in 04, and they played in, for it in 07. But they didn't have as much at stake in those two games as they did in, in 01, when had they won that game, you're going to be playing for a national championship in the Rose Bowl. When they lost that game, I'm not to say it was, it was never the same in Tennessee, but I think they struggled to find that swagger, that championship swagger that they had in the late 90s and early 2000s. It was gone, and it was taken away by Nick Saban and essentially a backup quarterback at LSU. Uh, and, and, I, and it's been tougher than ever since. They've had you know, SEC East titles. They've been in the national picture. They've played some big games. But it, it, it was never, it's never been like it was for them in, after that game. It, it really hurt that program. I think we're going to hear Hold That Tiger a few more times in our hotel tonight. Oh, I hadn't thought about that. More than Rocky Top. <laughs> you want to trade rooms? I'm on the second floor. <laughs> They answered the challenge. I mean, there was a physical challenge put out to LSU, and they answered it without Rohan Davey and without LeBrandon Tofield. Well, in college football, order and propriety has taken a step backward. Chaos reigns. The BCS vote will be slightly interesting. It will be announced tomorrow. Miami's in. For the fifth time this year, the second seeded team is a loser. Happened to Florida twice. Happened to Nebraska. Happened to Oklahoma. Nick Saban. <laughs> that was kind of a wimpy shower. <laughs> I bet he gets another one in the locker room. <laughs> what an effort. Matt Mock came on in place of an injured Rohan Davey. Dominic Davis came on in place of an injured LeBrandon Tofield. Nick Saban's team prevails, deservedly so. That was a huge win for LSU because LSU hadn't won the SEC since 1988 when they were co-champions. It had been a long drought. One of the longest droughts LSU would ever have without winning an SEC title. When they won that title with Nick Saban playing that brand of football with those athletes, since that point, LSU has, I think, reinvented itself as an SEC power. Now, there's been up and down years since then, but that game and that season really put LSU back on the map. It's probably the most improbable big game win in LSU history because there were so many factors that were going against LSU and yet they managed to win kind of going away. This game was the start of what has been, you know, a decade and a half of the best period in LSU football history. You had Nick Saban, star was, star was born. He wins the SEC. He goes on, wins the national championship a couple of years later at LSU, and the three that followed at Alabama. And you had Philip Fulmer on the cusp of winning another national championship. And his career was really never the same. Uh, there were a couple of good moments after that, but never could quite recover. Saban ended up one of the top coaches whoever, whoever was in this league or any other league. This was LSU's fifth straight win after starting the year four and three. The upset victory not only gave the Tigers their first SEC title since 88, but it cost Tennessee a berth in the Rose Bowl and a shot at their second BCS National Championship. LSU would defeat Illinois in the Sugar Bowl. Coach Saban would eventually lead the Tigers to a national championship in 03. Despite the loss, Tennessee quarterback Casey Clawson threw for 332 yards and a couple of touchdowns. The Vols routed Michigan in the Citrus Bowl. They finished the year 11-2. Thanks for watching SEC Rewind. Until the next time, I'm Joe Tessitore. Went for it, bobbled the snap. I don't Did know that he got it. Did not get it, not even close. It's amazing how those things turn out.
The seniors came up to me after the game and said, Coach, thanks for going for it on fourth down. I said, we never made it. He said, it doesn't matter. We never thought we could win until you showed us that you were willing to go for it on fourth down, and then we thought we could win after that. So my dumbest decision ever turned out to be pretty smart, and I didn't even know it.